You might be familiar with the Hyundai Kona. It's been around in both full electric and as a standard petrol car for quite a while, but now the company has introduced a full hybrid version that costs from under £23,000 and that offers efficiency and style enough to rival cars like the Toyota CHR. So here you've got a tidy looking small SUV that is complete with a 1.6 litre petrol engine and a 1.56 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, which combined actually gives this car 139 brake horsepower and an official economy of 56 mpg, CO2 emissions of under 100 grams per kilometre. So that all sounds quite tempting and certainly quite competitive with those cars like the Toyota CHR, which is a really popular car. So you can see why Hyundai have done this. The Kona's full hybrid powertrain works by using the brake regeneration system to top up the small battery. This in turn allows the 43 brake horsepower electric motor to power the car independently for short periods of time at low speeds. To state the obvious, you can't plug the Kona in. A full hybrid only ever tops up its battery using the car's own forward motion or braking energy. So ultimately you drive it just as you would a normal petrol car, only with the benefit of a bit of electric running to improve the car's efficiency. What I would say is that in the real world, full hybrids like this, they are sometimes a bit disappointing on real world economy. However, my first impression of the Kona is that it's doing really well. We've done a few miles on it and it's doing, getting on for its official economy. So it's doing low 50 mpg, even up to 55 mpg, which is really quite impressive. So that's all the tech stuff then, that's how this car works. And we know that it's efficient, so to be honest, that's probably all that most people want to know. But it does matter whether this is any good to drive. And I have to say, it's a bit middling. It's fine, but it can be really quite noisy. So you get a six speed automatic gearbox and gets a little bit noisy. The steering is really light and almost kind of disconcertingly short of feel. There's, there's very little sense of connection. Um, it's quite a lot of lean through corners. Do you know what? There's nothing really offensive about this car. It do 0 to 60 in about 11 and a half seconds, so you know it can get quite noisy and doesn't actually go anywhere very quickly. But for what people are going to want from it, it is smooth enough and quiet enough and just easy, I guess. But I do feel like it could be a bit better for a car that looks like this. Certainly, for instance, the CHR definitely drives with a bit more vim and vigour to it. It's a bit more fun. The ride is a little bit fidgety. Um, it doesn't really settle too well at higher speeds, but at lower speeds, it's all right and uh, I think it will do the job. The interior of the Kona is pretty good, I have to say. It is very grey and bland, but if you can forgive it that, all the switches are damped quite nicely. It's a very common sense layout and you do get reversing sensors, climate control and a seven inch touchscreen even in the base spec car. However, I think that premium spec is probably the sweet spot because you also get a reversing camera, you get auto lights and wipers, and you get this really excellent 10 inch screen, which gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. And honestly, it's about as good as it gets in this class now. The um, graphics are really good. You get all the functions you would want, and it's just really easy to use. So that is definitely a highlight of this car. You can go for premium SE, which is even more well equipped because that gets things like the head up display, leather upholstery, even a suite of driver aids including traffic sign recognition adaptive cruise control which all ends up functioning as like a semi-autonomous mode and is also very effective but you're talking about twenty-seven thousand pounds and up for that so i still think the mid-spec premium is the one to go for the kona isn't the best small suv going when it comes to practicality children will be fine in the back but legroom is tight for adults and the boot is also a touch small compared to rivals like the kia nero while fine for a small family the Kona is still a car that you buy for the way it looks, more than for its roominess. So there you have it then, the Hyundai Kona Hybrid. It doesn't blow me away in the way it drives at all, and uh, it's also not as practical as you might imagine for a compact SUV, certainly. There are actually family hatchbacks out there that will offer you more space. I would also have a Toyota CHR over this in terms of the way it drives, but for all of that, the Kona is good value. It's got loads of kit, especially if you go in the top two specs and you get this really amazing infotainment system and it feels like quite a lot of car for the money. So yes, it's fit for purpose and given the price, I think it's easy to see that it's a very worthy car. Head to drivingelectric.com for all of the electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews you could possibly want and check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. While you're here, don't forget to hit subscribe on our YouTube channel.